Once upon a time in World War II, Arthur Compton approached chemist Frank Spedding at Iowa State University. He wanted to find out if Spedding had the ability to purify uranium for Enrico Fermi's lab in Chicago. You see, it was very, very difficult to distill uranium down to the level of purity needed for the Manhattan Project. In fact, it still is, but we'll get to that later. Spedding started the Ames Project to help meet the need of scientists in the war effort. The project grew and grew and grew until in 1947, when Ames Laboratory was founded along with a new era in materials sciences. Through the years, Ames scientists challenged how we thought about chemistry, physics, metallurgy, and matter itself. In the 1950s, Ames Lab continued the work of the Atomic Age, a time when scientific knowledge about nuclear power was growing rapidly. Ames Lab was a big part of this crossroad between science and a new frontier in how we make our energy. In the 1960s, our reputation for purifying rare earths and other materials continued to grow. The Atomic Energy Commission made us a go-to resource for the whole country. We discovered new isotopes and better ways of processing even more elements in the periodic table. In the 1970s, the Atomic Energy Commission became the Department of Energy, and a new kind of science was needed to support government initiatives to protect planet Earth. Ames Lab's science zeroed in on pollution control and solar power. By the 1980s, we pioneered experimental methods of producing ultra-pure metals. It was kind of our thing. We set up a shop called the Materials Preparation Center, which still exports samples all over the world, decades later. The 90s were all about efficiency. Ames was asking big questions about how to make the world a better, healthier place to live. A giant magnetocaloric effect was detected, click on the link to learn more about that, and we helped invent lead-free solder, which still exists in every cell phone we carry around with us. In the new century, nanotechnology really took off, and Ames Lab was a frontrunner in explaining the magic of special materials like superconductors and quasicrystals, to name only a few. We developed new catalysts that harness the power of chemistry to improve our lives. These days, we're applying all of our smarts and materials science to a sustainable future, researching the chemistry that makes recovery of rare earths from e-waste, biofuels, and upcycling plastics possible. We're making every atom count, discovering and controlling new materials and new applications for them, like quantum computing. We're innovating for industry, developing materials and processes that help boost our economy. In the 40s, Arthur Compton set us the task of making materials necessary for the security of our country. Today, we continue that scientific legacy as a national laboratory, discovering new materials and chemistry for the security of our country's energy future and the planet's. Here's to another 75 years of creating materials and energy solutions at Ames National Laboratory.